two versions here. We have our bolt, which we're going to bolt into that socket there. We have one with an anchor on it already. We've mounted the anchor. Um, very simple. Just drill your hole, glue it in, in your pin alignment that you want. Um, and then go ahead and take your uh, dummy, tooling dummy, and mount this in a medial position. Um, you can certainly go whatever angle you want. Our standard here for a push button is medial. So we like the medial placement. Now your, your dummy, your tooling dummy is on there, ready to go, ready to fabricate. Um, you can go ahead and we'll get to pulling a test socket over this and also the version with the bolt through it, mounting that on. Okay, so now we have our uh, bolt-on version. What I've done here is flatten my distal end, um, drill the hole where I want my bolt to recess in. Okay, so you can certainly use plaster and fill in your hole. Um, we got some plaster here, throw in some plaster on it, and then mount your um, tooling dummy onto your mold. Um, I'm going to go ahead today, use a little bit of cow quick, throw it in the hole. And then go ahead and mount this in the position that I would like. Um, actually, I got my button lateral. I want her button medial. So I'll be looking. And just give it a little, just let it, that cow to quick, quick set up. Uh, once that sets up, we'll be all ready to go for a um, test socket or definitive lamination. Now we have our um, tooling piece dummy mounted to our mold. Um, we're getting ready. We got the plastic in the oven heating up. What we want to do is take uh, just a regular old pantyhose nylon and sheer vacuum nylon. And I'm going to go ahead and put this over our mold. And you can either do one or two of these nylons. You're just trying to create um, space for your uh, vacuum or to, for your plastic to draw down. Um, so what I usually do here is go ahead and just cut your toe end off. And then I will twist this nylon a little bit. Just get a nice tight shot there. So now you'll see here we got our our nylons over here. Um, we want to expose our four holes here. So you can either cut those or you can take a hot awl and burn the holes through your four hole adapter at the distal end. So I'm going to go ahead and heat my awl up here um, and expose these four holes on our, our dummy. So one, two, three, and four. Just get those exposed. Um, we do have our four foam dots that we're going to put on here before we pull our plastic. And today we're going to do a blister form um, test socket. You can certainly do the same thing with a drape mold if you're doing a copoly test socket. It's just the same thing with drape mold. Here I have our four. Uh, foam dots with uh, sticky backs on them. We just peel the paper off and set these on there. This is going to give us a space to grind to on our plastic. Um, once we've ground the distal end of the plastic, it's going to be nice and flat there, um, exposing those foam dots. Um, we have our push button on our dummy here. Um, you can go ahead if you want to. You can expose that. It really doesn't matter. Um, if you do or don't, it's just we're gonna draw, get a really good vacuum with this. It's gonna draw real nice around that entire lock. So here we're pulling our Vivac right over our mold and our drop-in uh, fabrication tooling. So just go ahead and pull this normally. Draw our vacuum on it, 
and you'll see that Get nice and tight around there. So now we got our test socket pulled over here, Vivac pulled over. I got my trim lines cut out, trim lines drawn onto the cast. Um, now we just got to expose our four holes at the distal end and also our uh, fabrication tooling dummy piece for our push button. We've ground to the foam on these. Now you'll just want to remove these little foam dots. Um, okay, now our Foam dots are gone. We have our uh, push button dummy exposed. Now we just want to remove our push button dummy from our uh, fabrication dummy. So we just attach our, our pyramid, our four, four hole pyramid, to the distal end of our um, fabrication tooling. So put our four, pier four hole pyramid onto our socket here. You know, this is all preference if you want. To just knock it off with the hammer and a piece of wood or, or plastic, go ahead and do that. If you do prefer one of our extractors, this is what I'm going to show you right now. We also have this big uh, screw here. We're going to go ahead and start threading this into our socket. Now you got it nice and tight there, you're gonna need a socket wrench. We have a three quarter inch standard socket wrench and we want to attach that to the bolt and start tightening down on it, allowing that center piece to push on the distal end of this socket. That screw's pushing that center piece up, allowing this fabrication dummy to fall out now we want to grab our lock itself, what we're gonna be using. Um, this is the lock attached to it is a built-in four hole pyramid adapter. Um, so we have a seal sealing uh, ring here. It's a silicone ring, it goes around to, to seal off your socket. We're still getting an airtight seal in our socket. Line it up in our socket here. So here we have our four hole pyramid um, we have our airlock in place. Um, we just want to drop this screw in to help um, assist pulling the rest of the lock into the socket. Get all four screws on there and then we'll tighten her down. Keep tightening these. Try to keep them even so you're, you're pulling the lock in all even as well. Now we're tight on these. We'll torque wrench this to uh, specs. And now we just want to take our standard airlock uh, lock plate, you can see here, for our pin to go through. Um, so we have our two springs on there. Um, our lock plate is in the correct position. So we just want to get that in there and be careful your, your springs don't come out or move on you. So I just tilt it this way and just kind of push it in, flip it back over drop in our third spring to go on. So they, now we have our, our uh, springs in there, our lock plates in there. We're ready for our push button uh, to install.